Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Krieger Margin 1. Okay. Uh, no. And I believe that this was probably the biggest mistake that we've made in our entire lives. <laughs> Um, do you have any uh, st st statistics and uh, numbers for this film? Are, are you just going to run through and call it good? I need you to bounce off me, my friend, with these, with these thoughts. All right. So we're going to do. We'll go numbers. I'm going to get my read. Wait, what's the name of the film? The Fanatic. Who's the star? The <laughs> known as... John Travolta, which made this film all the worse, as he's been accused of sexual assault of men very many times using his power. And Devin Sawa from Final Destination. So, the critics put this film at a 1.6, yes. and the fans put it at a 2.9. A 2.9? A 2. A 2. Why? The geniusness of it. Just the pure genius. Can I add one more thing? Is this a film that is this a film where you need to have alcohol to watch it? Yes. <laughs> I agree with this top cr critic. An unpleasant watch any way you slice it. This is the worst movie of the year, quite possibly, but it is absolutely <laughs> must be. Exp no, that's not the one I wanted. Oh, I like this one. This is from a top critic. John Travolta goes full, <laughs> and no one seems to really care in this campy thriller. That, it, that even betrays its own inner logic and doesn't even seem to be sure about the message it wants to send out. And yes, I'm looking at you, Mr. Turst. <laughs> the budget of this film is $23 million. $3,153 doll hairs. Lowest box office numbers I've seen in a film ever, if not in my check production history. What were some pros and cons for this film for you? Mike, what do you, I, I, I'm telling I'm you. I'm just going to, I am telling you. I want you to go off the rails. I Mike, can edit. I'm just going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you something. You want to know a movie that made more money than this movie? Thanks Killing. Thanks Killing. <laughs> Thanks Killing made more money than this movie. Yes. And this movie probably had... Because that, probably because that film wasn't as offensive as this one is. A turkey <laughs> a woman. Yeah, but this film deliberately targets the mentally challenged. It's not the fact that it targets them. It's the fact that he's pretending to be one. So over the top and offensively that it's ridiculous. He's not remotely no. special. No! John Travolta is like, in real life, is probably a really smart dude who's had actually some really good movies under his belt. Who is Devon Saw... Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa was the kid. <laughs> Devin Sawa is the kid from the first Final Destination film. Nope, I think you need to have him say he's from something else that's more important. Final. Devin Sawa played in its obsessed fan Stan in the music video Stan from 2000. He played Stan. <laughs> it makes it so much better. He played Stan. I called it in the movie. I said, oh, this guy reminds me of Stan, but I was looking at the wrong person. This movie has been reported as the worst movie opening of John Travolta's career. Moose is John Travolta's favorite character he's ever played. Moose is in the house. <laughs> Moose is in the house. There's a thing that makes it kind of okay-ish. John Travolta took the role as Moose as a tribute to his autistic son, Jet, who passed away in 2009. He does have an excuse, but at the same time, it... I feel like that excuse is not a good one. Because it's... it you... you... Oh, this film! I have more good things. You actually have good things for this movie? Do you remember the character Slim? Yes, the long-haired dude. Do you remember the fact that I mentioned uh, James Paxson? In this film? Mm -hmm. Do you know that was James Paxson? Do you know who James Paxson is? Enlighten us and the viewers. He is Bill Paxson's son. That is 
<laughs> double feature of Paxons tonight in our movie. And double reviews. feature of Los Angeles. If you guys didn't know, we watched Predator 2 before this. Um, also, that hair was not John Travolta's natural hair. I kind of figured that out easily. I can't talk too long. I gotta poo. This movie did not play in theaters. It premiered on the Sky Movies premiere channel in New Zealand. That's where they made their $3,000 from. Sky News. It doesn't seem very familiar to us, Michael, but that is the one of the top British news stations. News stations. Instead of movie theaters, not even direct to TV. Moo. I'm glad that they didn't charge money for this. A critic described uh, described this movie as Forrest Gump meets Taxi Driver. This film, okay, in a weird way, this film can be terrifying. If you look past 90% of the dumbass bullshittery in it. 90% of it. Um, that is most of the movie. It is said that this movie is so bad, over a year after the movie was released, John Travolta's wife, actress Kelly Preston, passed away from breast cancer. What does that have to do with anything with, with the movie? The story of this film is inspired by a real-life fan who pursued Limp Biscuits frontman Fred Durst many years ago. John Travolta was out in Hollywood with his wife Kelly Preston earlier earlier the year of 2019 when TMZ cameras asked him about his experience filming with Durst was like he his answer was found somewhat surprising this was my favorite movie experience I've ever had he's so generous and such an artist and he allowed me to create a character that no one else would allow I mean it was it's really a wild character and I felt free to do that I understand why Travolta did it but why did you do it? <laughs> I don't know. I actually enjoy this film. Or if I actually fucking hate this movie. But I know one thing. I never want to see it again. I'm glad it's out of the way and it's done. I've experienced it. Okay, I, I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm done. That's nice. I'm done. I'm done. Just, just, just finish. Finish, um, please. Let's see what it's featured in. Finish, please. I'm done. I'm broken. I'm mentally just destroyed. I am done talking about this movie. I have nothing good to share about it. Did you know that this is a remake? Did you know that? No. In 2016. No. It, no. No. In 2016... There was a movie called Fan, because the filmmaker told us to make The Fanatic as a remake of Fan, is the reason why it was a fan. Like, listen, the reviews are already out there. There are more in-depth reviews of this film than there is on this one right here. By this point, you probably know how awful this film is. And... I only wanted to watch it to kind of see how it is because Wait. I was told that it, you can either watch this film. This is beautiful. I'm not done talking. Wait. I am not done talking. I'm not done. I am not done talking. There's a thanks killing reference. You're, oh my fucking god. You're going to interrupt me anyways. With a fucking killer turkey. We should fucking die. But go on. This movie is referenced in the Cinema, Cinema Snob TV show episode of Thanks Killing. Where they mention this show and and compare it with Thanks Killing. Either way, you're either going to not finish this film or you will need some form of alcohol to fucking watch this movie because this film is you, this film is a goddamn chore to get through. So fuck for the folks at home that haven't seen this movie, what would your words to be them be? Is this offensive? Oh my god, like, I understand why he did the rope. This film is super offensive. It, he went over the top on this mentally challenged character, and I felt really uncomfortable 80% of the time in this movie. Heck, when you got up to go to the bathroom, to go take a pee, 
and he was just like sneaking around his house, like taking pictures with him. That was a little over halfway of the film. This film was an hour and a half long. Mike, I want this film was 30 minutes too long. Mike and viewers, in case you haven't seen my previous reviews, I said this movie's offensive. It is I, offensive. I don't think a character called Cletus the Fetus was offensive. I didn't think it was bad when the turkey <laughs> the lady. Um, but when Moose <laughs> stood up on our TV screen. But when he sat, walked in the room with a tarted haircut, I was thinking, okay, it's going to be some nice guy, and then he's going to go on a rampage or something. Because he likes violent. And then John very, Travolta likes violent things, and he likes touching small men. His very um, first line was, can't talk, I gotta poop! And that just set the fucking tone. And then it's like, he's literally mentally like full blown he eats mayonnaise every day for breakfast and he doesn't know how to function and he should be in a mental asylum but he has no family or friends he has a couple friends but not there enough to help him because they there's only so much you can do in life and this person should not be an independent person in society because they don't understand I <laughs> he just stopped mid sentence I want to roast him so bad but I feel st- I feel slightly bad now because his son had autism and he died and he did it as a tribute. It's not like... But he... I wouldn't do it in this kind of movie. This movie made it so bad. Why would you do that? Your son died and had autism. And, and so you made a... Tr- you acted as like... A I'm a big now. This is I'm going to act like a mentally challenged kid in a horror movie that is... Oh my god. And he said this is his favorite, favorite character he's ever played. Here's my thing. Um, I have a rating system. And this is one that hits on all levels without a shadow of a doubt. It goes up there with the Blair Witch Project. What's the other ones? Resident Evil Retribution. Resident Evil Retribution. And now... Killing Ground. Killing Ground. I'm giving this a 1 out of 10. My lowest possible score. Because it's from 1 to 10, not not 0 to 10. It's 1 to 10. This is one of the worst movies I've seen in my entire life. It should not have been made. And I am so glad that this movie did not make any money and they spent $23 million more money than I'm going to have in my entire life, more than likely. Do not try again. I want my time back. Okay, listen. Like I said before this movie even started, I've never seen it. I know how the movie goes. I mainly just wanted to see the experience that we would get out of it. And I, myself... I'm very conflicted whether or not if I enjoyed this experience or not. But if by how I am looking at myself right now, and probably edit me is going to say this as well, the glasses are off. That means I am done. <laughs> I am fucking checked out of this movie. This movie, you probably need a whole bottle of vodka and probably half a bottle of fucking gin on the side to get through this film. This movie. This Listen, when it comes to bad movies for me, there has been the films he's listed, like The Blair Witch Project, Resident Evil Retribution, Killing Ground. Films that I would add to that 1 out of 10 list would be fucking um, Brahms the Boy 2, or even Slenderman 2018. This film has broke the scale for me. The scale has been broken. It is. It needs to be repaired. I think we both needed this at the same time we did it. This film is getting a 0 out of 10. A 0 out of 10. I am glad that I got to experience this film and the way I wanted to enjoy it was, was with a, few, a, a couple drinks to begin with. But now that I am starting to sober up in a fit of rage that is actually in a very calm manner, I am glad that we will never have to see this film again and we didn't pay a single fucking dime to watch it. Because if we had to pay fucking six bucks to watch this film, I would have been incredibly pissed off. I would charge you $12. I need double of what that is. $6 for the movie, $6 for my time. All in all, this, we will never, ever 
ever touch this film again. This film should never be touched by anyone in Mike Check Productions or anyone involved in Mike Check Productions or anyone involved in Mike Check's life whatsoever from here on out. Me and Krieger did it for you. You don't have to watch this film at all. Avoid it at all costs. This film... I'm done. This is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Krieger, Margin, Dead. And... We're going to need probably a good night's sleep, a couple of sleeping pills to make us forget about this, and a good day tomorrow to remind us that this film never happened. By the way, um, Michael. Just in case you didn't know, John Travolta is a Scientologist.